Once an eagle. Attention, soldier. Attention! Take him off, Sergeant. Sir, I suggest you not take him off. Yes, sir. That's all, Sergeant. Sir, I suggest you not get dismissed. Yes, sir. Time, Joe. Do I know you? Uh, you may not remember. It's been ten years. I came to see your dad after the trouble at the plant. I remember. I remember. Now. You looked a lot better the last time I saw you. You didn't come here to talk about old times with me, did you, sir? Uh, no. I read the charges and the specifications. Then you know why I'm here. I know Lieutenant McLean's version. With all due respect, sir, you're trying to buy into a rigged game. Those guys know why I'm here. They just don't want to deal with it. So what you should do is just leave me alone, because I'm doing fine. Just leave me alone. Leave me alone. Look, Joe. I don't know who they are. And I don't really much care. But I got lots of time. So anytime you want to get started, you go ahead. Transfer to the base hospital first thing in the morning. You better hope there's nothing really wrong with him. Damon, wait a minute, boy. Hold up there, partner. Now, wait a minute. That nigga belongs here, not in no hospital. Nobody belongs here, Merrick. Now, wait, wait. You always turn your back on me. Now, why is that? I'll tell you why, Merrick. Ever since I've known you, you disgrace that uniform and everything it stands for. You spit on everything I've dedicated my life to. I swear to God, I'm gonna get you and every other killer like you out of this man's army. <clears throat> if you ever touch me again, well, I swear to God, I'll kill you. Captain Jerome? Yes. Sam Damon, Captain. I received notification I might be sitting on Private Brown's court-martial next month. Oh, yes. Well, I went and saw him last night. Thought I might know him from years back. Turns out I do. Then you'll be excused from the panel, of course. We'll catch you on another one, Damon. Thanks anyway. Well, I'm no lawyer, but I think you ought to plead not guilty. The man's admitted attacking Lieutenant McLean. Well, even so, I think he's got a legitimate defense. I'd like to see the file. I see no reason. The matter's closed. Well, we may reopen it. That would be a mistake. You know the circumstances? He told me. Then you must understand the need for discretion. Brand understood that when I spoke to him. I'm sorry, Captain. I think Private Brand was sold a bill of goods. Brand got the best advice I could give him. No one on staff 
is going to stick his neck out. Not if he wants to get ahead. I'm not on staff. You're not a lawyer, either. No, but I'm willing to defend him, and you're not. Now, do I see the file? Certainly. I just hope you know what you're doing. Come on, Donnie, get tough. Come on! Oh, I can't watch. Come on. All right, good. What happened? Well, see for yourself. Don't be a pain. Come on, Donnie. Anyone care to bet on this match? Yeah, I'll take Courtney! It. Oh, I don't oh, believe it! Why didn't you write or something? Uh, I'd spoil this marvelous reunion. Oh. Talking about writing, the father thinks he's been abandoned. Well, he should talk. Yes! All right! neighbor told me you were at the gym, provided impeccable instructions, and here I am. Here you are, without wife and daughter. Arriving Tuesday aboard the Italian liner, the Marco Vici. Dying to see you, I might add. Mm. Well, belated congratulations, Major. Thanks. Right place at the right time. You sure served in some hell holes. Fort Dormer was a beauty. Yeah. The wrong place all the time. Hope you like tuna fish. Anything, absolutely anything. One thing you can say about Air Corps transportation. They're short on frills. I didn't goodbye. If you're going out, wear your jacket. That's all right, Mom. It's warm. Donnie. Okay. All right. One jacket, all right? Uh, Dad, is it okay if I borrow the car? Commander of yours. I burned a valve. Mm. Help yourself. Thanks. Night, Mom. Mm. Good night. Night, Major. Be home by 11. And please don't slam the... Yeah, what do you think? Ah, it's beautiful. Does it really go? Now and then. Happy to find you here, Sam. Really happy. Particularly after that parade of losers you've been stationed at. If I were a Dutch uncle, I'd tell you that most of it was your fault. Yeah, I kind of figured that out after about six years. I admire perseverance and guts. But sometimes it's a matter of knowing what's important and what's not. For example, defending Joe Brand? Court, you've been here for nine days now without a phone call. Yesterday, you had lunch with Colonel Patterson. Now, all of a sudden, here you are, dropping in and circling around like a hawk after a wounded chicken. All right, my fine wounded friend. Let's talk about your budding but star-crossed career as a military advocate. He's not guilty, Court. Sam, of course he's guilty. Guilty of being an enlisted man. Guilty of associating with the wrong person at the wrong time. Guilty of being a Negro. Everybody seems to bring that up. I feel sorry for Brand. Maybe it's not justice, but it is reality. He's going to be convicted, and you can't stop it. But you could drag yourself down with him. I could. That's my problem. What the hell is the matter with you? Don't you know who you're fighting? Damn it, Court, it doesn't make any difference. Which is why you're still a captain with eight years in grade, and I am a major. A year away from light colonel. Now, if you make colonel and Joe's acquitted, we'll both get what we want. I'm telling you as a friend. Come on, Court. If you were any kind of friend, you wouldn't come here trying to get me to sell that boy out. That kind of crap might work with those fat heads in the War Department, but not with me. So go back and tell Colonel Patterson that your old buddy Sam Damon isn't gonna roll over and play dead. I'm sorry, Sam. Honestly. I did tell Patterson I'd talk to you. But as God is my witness, I did it as much for your sake as for my own. I mean that. Okay. Good luck, Sam. Thanks. I'll tell Tommy good night. Emily! Emily! It's Steve. Watch your step. 
up, Ginny. Let me see you. Oh, it's been such a long time. I missed you. Oh. Oh. Ginny, how did you like your trip? Was I right? <gasps> Nonsense. It was wonderful. The food, the music, and the Italians. Oh. I don't know what all the talk is about. They're not all like Mussolini. <laughs> Believe me. Well, we found you a wonderful little place. Oh, if it has a sofa, lead me to it. My feet are killing me. <laughs> By the way, where's Sam? Is he uh, playing hard to get, or has he run off with one of the locals? Neither. He's defending a young boy in a court martial. And then I saw Private Brand strike Lieutenant McLean. He struck him. Yes, sir. Then what happened? Lieutenant McLean, he, he said he was going to bring him up for charges. That's when Brand ran for it. Naturally, the lieutenant went after him. You joined in the chase? Me and a couple others. Ryan, Caravetta. The lieutenant told us to. Then what? Brand, he, he got himself boxed into a corner by the shed. So he, he picked up a piece of pipe, hit the lieutenant on the arm. Never took my head off, too. That's when Sergeant Ives showed up. We managed to grab his arm and subdue him. It took four of us to hold him. I can tell you this. There was murder in his eyes. Object! Sustained. I have no further questions. Sergeant Ives, did you say that Private Bran was holding that pipe in an aggressive posture or one of self-defense? Objection. Sustained. Then let me ask you this. Did you see any other weapon? No, sir. You're quite sure? I was maybe 40 yards from him when I saw him. I saw Bran swing at the lieutenant's arm. I rushed forward. Lieutenant McLean had a weapon. I didn't see it. What can you tell me about Lieutenant McLean's physical condition that morning? I'm not sure I understand the question, sir. Well, it was approximately, oh, 900 hours. Was he wide awake? Tired? Sleepy? I couldn't say, sir. Had he been drinking? I wouldn't know, sir. Well, suppose I told you he'd been seen an hour earlier in the mess kitchen drinking whiskey. I wouldn't know about that. Are you aware that Private Brand is part Negro? Yes, sir. Objection. How do you feel about that? That's irrelevant. Is it? No further questions. You're excused, Sergeant. Keep in mind that you're not to discuss this matter with anyone outside this courtroom. Yes, sir. I have no further witnesses. Very well. Captain Damon, you may proceed. Thank you, sir. I call Private Joe Brand to testify. I was working on one of the staff cars, adjusting the plugs, when Lieutenant McLean approached me. I could tell right away that he was drunk, and the way he was walking, and, and he got close enough for me to smell it on his breath. Did he speak to you? Yes, sir. What did he say? What did he say, Private Brand? He wanted to know how come a little nigger boy like me come off thinking he was good enough to mess with a white woman. And how did you respond? I didn't say nothing. I just kept on working. Didn't want any trouble. But he did. Uh, he said he had a mind to put me in my place. What were his exact words? Uh, he said, I'm going to make sure you never get to use that thing again, nigger. And then what? He put his hand in my arm. And you did what? I shoved him away. You didn't strike him? No, 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 no. I just shoved him. So, Lieutenant McLean, obviously drunk, threatened you with bodily harm and put his hand on you. Yes, sir. And then what? Then he pulled a knife, and he flicked the blade open, and he started to smile at me. You know, he was teasing me. And when he... 
started to come at me, I ran for it, but I got myself boxed into a corner. You know that no knife was found. Yeah, well, after the others dragged me off, Lieutenant McLean was still there. <laughs> so I guess, I guess he picked it up. The other men testified McLean was unarmed. They're lying. You know a lady named Estelle Patterson? Yes, sir. Objection. The young lady's identity is irrelevant. Sustained. If it pleases the court, the young lady's identity is vital to the defendant's case in that it proves prejudice and malice on the part of Lieutenant McLean. This court is adjourned to 1,400 hours. Gentlemen. I'll see you both in my office in 15 minutes. Coffee, Captain? No. No, thank you, sir. Now, Captain Damon, I admire the zeal with which you're defending this young man and your skill. Quite commendable for a lady. Thank you, sir. But I cannot permit you to drag into this trial the daughter of one of our most respected officers. Sir, I have only the highest admiration for Colonel Patterson. And I wish there were some way to avoid this unfortunate situation. But I happen to believe that his daughter's conduct is very much the issue here. Gently, Captain. Sir, this is a private meeting, off the record. And we're all grown men here, so let's just lay it on the table. Now, this Miss Patterson is a fun-loving young lady who has bestowed her favors on many young men, officers and enlisted men included, including Lieutenant McLean and Private Brand. And when she threw over McLean for Brand, I'd say McLean was insanely jealous, not because he was jilted, but because she preferred, in his eyes anyway, an inferior human being. Prejudice isn't on trial here, Damon. The hell it is. The charges in this case are oh, very specific. All right. Gentlemen. Perhaps Lieutenant McLean may have overstepped himself in that case. We might consider a reduction in charges. No, I'm sorry, sir. I can't accept that. An officer has a duty to protect his men to instill in them a sense of honor and responsibility. Lieutenant McLean violated that duty. Private Brand should not have to pay the penalty, and neither should Miss Patterson. Tried and true. To the court, he put the screw. <laughs> they couldn't find his client guilty. Not with the kind of case he built he. Oh, Ben! Oh. Oh. I'll drink to it anyway, Ben. Yeah, me too. Oh, not allowed. You're the toasty. Irrelevant immaterial. <laughs> I do believe he's found a new profession. Mm -hmm. Not me, Ben. Got one lawyer growing in the hot house. That's enough. Johnny? Doctor, lawyer. Maybe second lieutenant? Not a prayer. Oh, hi. Hi. Is that yours? Yeah, well, my mom and I both drive it when it's running, which isn't often. When I'm 16, my mother's going to buy me a new LaSalle. Oh, yeah? I could have a Cadillac if I wanted one, but I just don't want one. Hmm. You got a girlfriend? <laughs> sure. A couple of them. Who? You wouldn't know them if I told you. I have five boyfriends at home. That's great. I write to them. But still, they're at home, you know?
you want to take me out, it's okay. We could have a good time. Well, I'm kind of tied up. I mean, a good time. Hey, come on. You're just a kid. Ask me out. <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't think I can handle you. That's what I thought. You want to leave it? I don't think I could face it in the morning. <laughs> I give you. All right, Sam. What is it? Hmm? You've had that look all evening. What look? You know. Come on out with it. Oh, yeah. It's a verdict today. I think I got Joe off the hook and got myself on. You mean you had to resort to a little of your rough and tumble Nebraska street fighting, huh? Well, yeah, I was a little more Al Capone than Clarence Darrow. You got Joe off, didn't you, Counselor? Yeah, I know, but... Don't butt me, Sam. You've been carrying on like this for 20 years. Why should you change now? Almost 11. Why don't you put your news on? Good idea. Speak with you for a minute. Well, come on in. Now, I want to talk to you. Are <laughs> you doing a little party? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Listen, I, uh, well, I, I didn't get a chance to say thanks back there in the courtroom, you know. I, uh, wanted to see you tonight, because I'm not going to be here tomorrow to, uh, tell you tomorrow. What happened? Order, sir. I was, uh, cut this afternoon. They're shipping me out to Sill. For my own good, Captain says. Give me a new start, Captain says, where they won't know about me. Take some friendly advice, he says. Keep your mouth shut. Do your work. Don't tell them. What you are. Be like that. What I am. Not who I am. Not who I am. But what. What I am. Damn it, I'm sorry. Maybe someday that won't matter. Maybe it'll change. Well, no offense, sir, but uh, that's easy for you to say because... Uh, you don't have a colored grandmammy. Yeah. Anyway, uh... There was something else I could say. Nope. Troops of the Third Reich have marched into the Sudetenland, meeting minimal resistance from Czechoslovakian troops. 
To repeat, we have received a bulletin from the BBC in London. German troops moved across the border into the Sudetenland at 6 a.m. local time. Scattered reports indicate armored units as well as several infantry divisions are involved in the attack. By cable, we now bring you a transcription of a statement issued by the German Chancellor Adolf Hitler from his office in Berlin. It is exactly the organization of this community which is something gigantic and There is hardly a German in irgendeiner Formation dieser nationalsozialistischen Gemeinschaft persönlich verankert und tätig ist. Sie erreicht hinein in jedes Haus, in jede Werkstatt, in jede Fabrik, in jede Stadt und in jedes Dorf. Sie erfasst darüber hinaus sogar alle Angehörigen des Reiches, die sich in fremden Ländern befinden. Go get him. Calculate, you've lost nine out of ten men in your force. Tenth, wounded and taken prisoner. Blue forces suffered no casualties in the encounter. I protest! Damn it, Damon, this is not your territory. Well, it is now. So are those horses. How many fit to be ridden, sir? Oh, I'd say eight out of ten. Good. Any cowboys here? All right, you first four. Mount up and take those orange armbands. Major, this is an outrage. Ah, oh, knock it off, Winkley. You heard the man. You're dead. Lay down. Play dead. Come on, give me an armband. Thank you. Sorry, we're just observing, Colonel McKelvey. Strategy is your responsibility. Oh, I understand, sir. I thought you might give me a nudge in the right direction. Colonel! Some of the board just landed a big one. Captain Damon. They're bringing him in there. Damon! Hell's bells! The blue ground attack is in the apple barrel! <laughs> well, well, well. Captain Damon, it is truly a pleasure to greet you like this. You can take your hands down. Thank you, sir. What's the matter, Sam? Run into a little bad luck? Well, we ran into Captain Winkler's troop a couple of miles back. Winkler, yes, good man. Where is he? Dead, sir. That's too bad. Lieutenant Bryce? Yeah, he took one, too. Sergeant, what's his name? Tall fellow. Sparks. Sparks, sir. Afraid we got him, too. Boys! The umpire came out of the woods and tells Mac that he's wiped out. Lock, stock, and command post. <laughs> to the victor, wherever he is. The victor's out warming up the car. Oh, that's right. So we'll be late for the car. Let's go. Jenny, we're going. Good night, Mom. Good night, Dad. Good night. Try and get a little studying done. Final exams next month. I'm going over to Cynthia's to study. Who? I, I already told you. It's a new girl from town. I'll be home by 12. See that you are. Good night, honey. Good night. Good night, dear.
tonight's the night. What? Courtney. He's been clouding up to something for weeks. Haven't you wondered about this sudden attention we've been getting? You are unkind, woman. No, just curious. I didn't say I wanted war, my dear. I said it was inevitable. But why? Marge. Well, Ben, it just seems to me like if there's something that ought to be settled, there ought to be a way of sitting down and settling it. Well, what do you think, Sam? Yeah, there should be, Margie. Just never seems to happen. Look, if you give a gorilla a banana to keep him happy, he'll be back for another one. And another one. Just like Hitler. You let him take back the Ruhr, annex Austria, march into Czechoslovakia, or even Chamberlain put the British seal of approval on that one. Still in all court, Margie's right. You do want it. Well, why pick on me, Tommy? Don't we all? Isn't that why we're here? How about you, Sam? Field commission a second lieutenant. In 13 months, you're a major. They bust you back down to lieutenant, and it takes you 11 years to get back to captain. Same for Ben. All hail the peacetime army. Well, at least you're honest. I'm sure Court doesn't mean he wants to fight. Well, I doubt Court will have to fight. War or no war. Unless they manage to bomb the War Department. Honey, this isn't a place to get into that. No, Sam? Where else? Here we sit, honing our sabers. You build a car to drive it. What do you think we've been doing for the past 20 years? I wish I knew. <laughs> Question, Sam. You think a dozen long-stemmed roses will calm the troubled waters? <laughs> Forget it, Court. Wasn't your fault. Yeah, it's coming, Court. This year. Next year. We all know it. She's just afraid for Donnie. I can't blame her. Sorry about our little to-do in the garage the other night. I hadn't realized your relationship with Brand was personal. I didn't alter the facts. <laughs> you are a wonder, Sam. You stick your neck out in the wrong places, for the wrong reasons, alienate the wrong people. Still, what you did was right. I admire that. Thanks. Put it in my file. I can use a kind word. I can do more than that. I'm still not sure where your ambitions lie. Well, I'd like to go to the war college. Make colonel if I can. Head up a regiment. That's fine as far as it goes. But you'll still be just another piece on the chessboard. I can make you one of the players. One of the real players. This an offer of some kind? <laughs> Call it that if you like. If the war comes, I have a chance of making Brigadier very quickly. I'm going to need men around me, not fawning manipulators. Lord knows I can find enough of those. Men who can think and act decisively. In short, a team I can depend on. You can be the key member on that team. Yeah, thanks, Court. I'm not staff material. Don't be so sure. Court, I'm here for one reason. To fight if I have to. To train others to fight and survive. That's all. When the war comes, I'm going to be out in the field. Not sitting behind some desk ordering a bunch of faceless names in the combat. Sam, the war will be won from behind those desks. Maybe so, but I won't be sitting in one of them. It's too bad. We would have made a great team. We would have made a great team. Shall we rejoin?
join the ladies? It is with a feeling of pride and accomplishment and with some misgivings that we, the class of 1939, leave this school behind. Ahead looms the threat of war. But maybe instead we ought to think of it as a challenge to make and keep the peace. A very wise and honest man has taught me never to run from a fight. But fighting isn't always the answer. One answer, yes, but not the only one. Sure, we're proud of our military tradition, and rightfully so. When force of arms has been required, we've never hesitated to use it. But only as the ultimate response to the endangerment of our liberty. Before that first American soldier falls on the field of battle, other responses must be explored and exhausted so that we can truly say we had no choice. I don't believe we must always destroy to rebuild, kill in order to give new life. The armor and aircraft and weapons of the mechanized army will not only decimate the vanquished, but the victors. No, let us not run from a fight if fight we must. But let us first try to find every other possible means to preserve the peace. Thank you. It's so strange looking out there at all those uniforms. Congratulations. Get the next train out of town. Right? Oh, Donnie, I like it. You did? You see Jacqueline's face? I thought he was gonna pop an artery. Congratulations, partner. You said it all. Sent for me, sir. Captain Damon certainly works his company hard, doesn't he? You mean uh, Damon's Demons? <laughs> Is that what they're called? Yes, sir. Not entirely for their military prowess. Sam feels that men who work hard are entitled to play hard. Not that the MPs always agree with it. The War Department's stepping things up a little. They want candidates for the War College. I think Damon's a good choice. I've had his orders cut. You're a close friend of Damon's, aren't you? Yes, sir. I think I understand him quite well. Frankly, sir, I think his ambitions lie in other directions. In fact, I hesitate to bring this up since you're planning to send him to the War College. Speak freely. I was thinking of the 20 June directive requesting officer observers in the China campaign to study the Japanese tactics firsthand. You think he'd prefer China? As a friend, yes, sir. But I know that wherever Sam goes, he'll do a bang-up job. China. Oh, honey, I'm not going to be fighting. I'm going over there strictly as a volunteer observer. It's something court worked out with General Jacqueline. Remind me to thank them both. That's not going to solve anything. Maybe not. But it sure puts a warm glow on the problem. I mean, why wait until we're in it when you can get the jump on everyone? Sam Damon. 
first to fight. Tommy. How long will you be gone? When do you leave? I don't know. No doubt you remember Donnie leaves for Princeton at the end of next month. Well, honey, you're not exactly going to be alone here. You got our friends. You oh, can... everything a woman could want. A husband at one end of the globe and a son at the other. I suppose I could go back with Donnie, live nearby the campus. No. No. That's right, no. He's still my son. And mine, too. When it's convenient. Do you remember Erie, Sam? Ten years ago, when we discovered you were a bigamist, married to me and the Army? Oh, honey, I know it's been tough. It... Well, I have two loves, Sam. You and my son. And if you're gonna jolly well run off to China, I'll be damned if I'm gonna hang around here like Alice sit by the fire awaiting your royal return. Well, that's just fine. You wanna go visit your dad or go someplace else, that's just fine. But you're not chasing Donnie back to Princeton. Don't you tell me what to do. I'm telling you, our boy's got two good legs, and he's gonna have to learn to stand on them. Now, if you wanna walk out on me, that's fine. Go back to Pearl, back to L.A., I don't care. But you're not chasing after Donnie. Is that an order, Captain? You can call it anything you like. Where are you going? I'm going to pack. Leaving so soon? We're just getting started. I'll be at the BOQ. If you want to talk to me, you know how to get in touch with me. something you should know about before you leave. I got these from Liz, who got them from Joni over in operations. Your orders. It says I'm going to the war college. And this one says you're not. And guess who's going instead? Your buddy, Mazingale. They never said anything about this. That's right. Courtney saw to it. While he trots off to Washington, he's got you pipeline to China. Well? Well, what? What are you going to do about it? I'm going to China. Oh, Sam, are you nuts? Now, listen, do something. If it were me, Look, I'd take... forget about it. Sam, would you... I said forget it. But Courtney's going where he wants to go, and I'm going to learn to fight Japs. All things considered, I say I got the best of it. Let's go. Take care of the demons, huh, Ben? Kick a few butts. Been practicing for a week. Well, maybe, maybe she overslept or something. You know, Tommy. Yeah. I was kind of hoping maybe Donnie would show. Yeah. Well, maybe he'll meet us at the airstrip. Yeah, maybe. Mom, where are you? We're late. Mom. Is it? It's quarter to twelve. Oh. I must have dozed off. Yeah. What is it? What's the matter? You were supposed to meet me at the club 20 minutes ago, remember? Oh, Donnie. I'm sorry. You promised, Mom. You said you'd go. Yes, I know. I, uh... I just fell asleep. We can still make it. No, uh... You go. Mom... Donnie, please go. He'll be looking for you. It's important to him. You're okay. Yes, I'm fine. Go on. Go on. <laughs> 